Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to explain to you why you will be walking away with the Gulfstream G280 today over its closest competitors, the Bombardier Challenger 300 and the Cessna Citation 10. Now, as you can see, uh, price range about the same, uh, 24 million even on your basic model G280, Bombardier Challenger 300, just over 24 million, and 22 million 550,000 for the Cessna Citation 10. Now, if you're going to be spending this kind of money on an aircraft, you're going to want comfort. You don't want to be herded in like cattle, like you would on a Southwest, and there's no room. As you can see on, in their basic configurations, the G280 and the Challenger both uh, typically are outfitted for 10 passengers, and the Citation 10 is up to 12 passengers. Now, with the Citation having the most passengers available in the cabin, they actually have the smallest cabin of the aircraft. Uh, the aircraft itself in the external dimensions of the G280 is six feet uh, shorter than the Bombardier and seven feet shorter than the Cessna Citation. Um, all of my information gathered here today, uh, the majority comes from Aviation Week Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine and then also uh, backed up by each prospective manufacturer's website. So this is a camera view down the interior of each of these aircraft, and you can see the Cessna Citation down here, that's pretty narrow to walk in. If you're going to be spending $23 million, I want to be comfortable. I don't want to be bumping into other executives spilling their coffee. Oh wait, it doesn't have a coffee maker. But <laughs> <laughs> you want to be comfortable with that kind of price. Um, the G280 is the only aircraft with a coffee maker and a hot pocket, and it has a longer range. It can fly from uh, New York to France, and it's the only one of these three that can do so nonstop. And I would want to enjoy a hot pocket and a cup of coffee at 37,000 feet myself. And if your pilots can't stay alert due to a lack of caffeine, that is a safety concern. Now keep that in mind. <laughs> As you can see in a four passenger configuration, the range in nautical miles uh, were just about 3,600 on the uh, G280. And then the Citation and the Challenger both fall short by over 300 miles in that uh, category. Now, yes, the Citation is faster, but they're not going to cruise at 608 miles an hour because they're going to run out of fuel very quickly. And as you can see, they try and get their best range at 464. So it's about 20 knots faster, and that's really not going to equate to that much time. As you can see, here is the cruise capability uh, with the Citation just over 500 there on their upper end of the cruise speed. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm lost for words. Look at that beautiful airframe. <laughs> so let's look. If you were to travel 1,000 nautical miles, the G280 would put you about 2 hours and 19 minutes. Challenger 300, very comparable. <coughs> and uh, your speed in bullet there is only going to beat you by about 17 minutes. But what the Citation is going to do is cost you about $1,000 per 1,000 nautical miles more than the G280. Uh, and also, the Challenger 300 is about $300 more per thousand uh, nautical miles. This plane almost prints money when compared to these other two aircraft. So let's recap on what we've talked about today. The G280 is the only aircraft with a microwave and coffee maker. has the widest cabin, uh, 1.7 feet wider than the Cessna Citation and 6 inches wider than the Challenger. Uh, 17 to 35% bigger than most competitors in the mid-size range. And then also has the largest interior and exterior baggage storage areas. Uh, it has the highest useful and max payload. And then looking at these baggage areas, 1,980 pounds with 154 cubic feet of storage, 
as compared to 750 pounds with the 106 cubic feet. But Cessna doesn't want to talk about this because they're going so fast that you don't have enough time or luggage capacity to take your things with you because they just cram people in their cabin. These are my sources, uh, mainly from Aviation Week. <laughs> and uh, is there any questions at this time? <laughs> yeah, you'll have to consult with the FAA, but I'm thinking not. <laughs> yes, Paul. What? You gotta give me a good reason because those 15 minutes and the thousand miles that can make the difference on seeing your child's birth or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say you need to loosen up your schedule and get your priorities straight, sir. <laughs> What was that? If you dollars the seventy-seven to or seventy-eight to eighty-eight seat range, uh, the CRJ nine hundred yeah it has a few more seats, but that just means more packed. So I uh, don't want to overwhelm you with all this, so I won't stay on here for too long. But um, this is just all the standard takeoff information and the weight carrying capacity. They have the AR version, which is probably the best one as far as carry capacity goes, but it uh, takes a little longer to take off and everything. And then you have your standard versions and long range versions. So there's all that information for you. Now, why is it better? The max takeoff weight. Um, although the CRJ has a larger capacity, the Embraer 175 can carry a significant more amount of cargo. And that's. Um, just, um, yeah, so like 5,000 pounds extra. And um, that's compared between a C or a Embraer 175 long range versus a normal CRJ 900. So I kind of, you know, it's a little uneven, but it's what you got to do. Um, also, we got that whole double bubble cockpit or double bubble uh, configuration going on. So that's how you get maximum uh, cargo weight because it uh, changes the size of the cargo hold. And also you get extra headroom and like more baggage space in the carry-on baggages. So hopefully you won't have to check your carry-ons at the gate because they ran out of baggage space. Um, also, there's several different configurations for the 175. You can do a single class uh, cabin with, uh, it's about 88 seats. Or you can do the, uh, it has different classes like first class and stuff. So you get the nicer seats up front and everything. Uh, the cabins are slightly wider than the CRJ, so that makes it good there. Um, also, well, yeah, I already stated the diverse seating arrangements. And then here's just a picture from the inside where at eye level, it seems like a pretty wide cabin, whereas the CRJ, you're kinda, your head's already kind of above the eye level part, so it looks a little like, it's like you're standing in an A-frame or something, so I, I didn't really like that. Um, also, back on the other side, comparing the information, I got that uh, info from airliners.net and then verified it with um, uh, Embraer's website as well as Bombardier's website. Um, they use the same engines, so power is kind of the same, but since the Embraer carries more weight, it does go a little slower and it has longer takeoff distances, but you get to carry more, so it kind of evens out. Um, yeah, that's the end of mine. So. Any questions?